Music Podcasts. Hi guys, welcome to Learn Kenyan Law with Wanjiko. I am your host, Wanjiko Mwangi. Hi people, my name is Kennedy Wirotsi. I'm a vision uh, specialist. I work with uh, I work in Wilson Airport and also I'm a law student at Mount Kenya University Law School heading to third year. Thank you so much for being here with us and I feel like you're the perfect person to have here in, because we specifically want to talk matters of aviation law. Much appreciated. And as we start off, I'd want us to talk about the regulatory bodies and the legislative provisions that we have here in Kenya when it comes to aviation laws, the, the aviation industry. What governs us here in Kenya when it comes to that? Uh, thank you so much, Wanjiku. And uh, I'll say aviation is just like any other noble uh, means of transport here in Kenya and around the world. Mm -hmm. But since we are confined into the Kenyan system, I'll say uh, the Kenyan system we are governed uh, by dint of Article 2.5 uh, Article 2, 5 and 6, where international law becomes part of our national law. So we've ratified the Chicago Convention, mm -hmm. we've ratified the Tokyo Convention, and we've ratified the Montreal Conventions. Mm -hmm. These are the mother uh, international conventions that Kenya has ratified. And uh, when you come down to Kenya, we have so many subsidiary legislations that govern aviation industry, and that's why you can see we have the Kenya Civil Aviation Act. Mm -hmm. This is the body that is mandated to give license to any aviation operator, be it cargo, be it passenger, be it any service that you want to do. Even now uh, we have the AMO. AMO is the maintenance part of aviation because we have companies that deal with maintenance of aircrafts. Mm -hmm. The Kenya Civil Aviation is the regulatory body that deals with anything concerning aviation. Now, when you, in any aviation, of course, there's an airport. And the airport is being manned by the Kenya Airports Authority. And we have the Kenya Airports Authority Act, which gives them the mandate to... Now, uh, they have their own mandate under the act to, uh, to take, to protect aircrafts to guard the aircrafts because where the aircrafts are being taken or uh, where the aircrafts are being parked more so, they need to be parked in a secure and in a safe place. That's why we have those two bodies that deal with that. Okay, so um, is that the same as uh, saying there are also the multilateral instruments that we have here in Kenya? Or do we have different multilateral and bilateral instruments as well that contribute to the legal aspect of the aviation industry? I will say they are not the only ones because mm -hmm. aviation is wide. Yeah. And uh, if I can just touch on, on the latest uh, treaty that is being uh, has been ratified by most of the countries, Kenya being one of them, is uh, the Saturn Convention. Mm -hmm. We have a Saturn Convention which wants to make Africa become one. You can imagine, Wanjiku, if the richest man in Africa, Dangote, is to travel in Africa, he needs 35 visas just to travel around Africa. Yeah. And that's by means of air. And if he goes to the European, to the, uh, let's say, for example, he goes to the Europe, he only needs one visa. Mm -hmm. And he can travel anywhere he wants in Europe. So the certain convention has been brought in place to make sure that Kenya, uh, that Africa becomes one. So that anybody who travels from South Africa to Egypt or comes from Egypt to Kenya only needs, requires one visa. And that's why we have the certain convention we, which wants to address issues concerning travel so that somebody does not require so many visas to travel by air from one part of Africa to the another part of Africa. And I think the African Union has really slept, I'll really be on uh, head on with African Union because they've slept on your work. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't understand the reason why we, ha we haven't yet achieved it, yet we say we want Africa to become a global village. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I feel like it would actually be a very good idea instead of having those different visas. It's easier, even economically and all that. Absolutely. So, 
I've heard you talk about um, the bodies that are responsible of enforcing these laws. Yes. Can you now delve deeper into it? You know, Absolutely. let's start with whichever you choose. Which one is the highest in terms of hierarchy or do they have all different um, duties and obligations they're supposed to perform? They have different duties and obligations they're supposed to perform. Mm-hmm. But I will really d- deal with the Kenya Civil Aviation Authority. Yeah. Yes. Tell us a little bit about... Now, the Kenya Civil Aviation Authority is the legal body that issues license to most of the air operators here in Kenya. And it it works hand in hand with the international body called in, uh, ICAO. In full, it's the International Convention of Aviation Organization. Mm-hmm. ICAO is a part of the United Nations that only deals with aviation matters. Now, the Kenya Civil Aviation Authority, before an airline is start or before any training on organization is start or any service provider who wants to to provide service in the aviation industry they are the ones who the mandate to issue you with a license and let's take an example of an airline kennedy wants to start an airline so what's the process uh what happens is the kenya civil aviation have something we call a five phase and in that five phase is you start with phase one to phase five and each phase represents an activity that has to be done for you to be allowed to operate here in kenya an example is phase one you will only deal with matters um biodata and in that in that i mean kennedy wants to start an airline Mm -hmm. so he has to fill the required forms the forms that you have to fill uh, giving giving them who is going to be your accountable manager because hmm. the key, key aspects in the management they're going to check. So the post holders, who is going to be the accountable manager, who is going to be the quality manager, who is going to be the, uh, the safety manager, who is going to be the aviation security manager. Mm-hmm. All that, once you fill that forms, they have to attach their curriculum vitae with it with the qualifications and with the, uh, let's say the qualifications they've done. For example, Kennedy has done a degree in aerospace science. So he has to attach his aerospace and any aviation training that I've gone through because we have the IATA. IATA does most of the trainings to airlines and more so in the whole world. So once that is done, you take to Kenya Civil Aviation Authority. They have to verify that whatever data that you've given them is the correct data. And the people that you want to place into those positions are the correct people who have qualified to be in the aviation industry. You see, so once that is done, they write a letter to you. Back now, Kennedy is, is the one who's the person who's starting the airline. So once the, the letter is written, they'll tell me, we've checked and everything is okay and Everyone who uh, you've submitted as a post holder, they qualify. So we are closing phase one and going to phase two. So once that is done, it has to be, a letter has to be written either by the director general or on behalf of the director general because you're given somebody who will work with you during the five phase. So once you finish the phase one and the, re- the letter is given, it's been issued, we now go to phase two. Phase two, you follow, they will give you the requirements of phase two. So they write a formal letter. Once they've written the formal letter, uh, in the close of phase two, again they write a letter to tell you we've closed phase two, we are heading to phase three. Until you reach phase five, where now we do the demonstration. And in demonstration, I mean you need to have an office. You know, we have rich guys who can just decide, oh, I want to start an airline. So, how do I go about it? I have the money, I have everything. But you see, there's money to it. There's more to money in aviation industry. So once you are done with the demonstration is when your aircraft has to, has to be flown. And we have different departments in the Kenya Civil Aviation Authority. So when it comes to the flight operations, they're going to check who is the one. You, you, do you have an uh, operation control center that is called the OCC? And that is the main office when it comes to matters operations. Once the aircraft is airborne, it has taken off, they have to report their position, 
they have to report the time they took off they have to report the number of so- this, uh, the number of souls they are carrying plus the crew they have to to report their estimated time to where they are going what time they will so that despite the fact that you've reported to us again you have to report to the control tower and still the control tower is being manned by the Kenya Civil Aviation Authority so they see anything that is happening on air you see so Kenya Civil Aviation Authority to me they have done a very commendable job because they've made aviation become one of the most regulated industry you can never do anything in aviation without documentation so it makes this thing of uh somebody just mischievously wants to do something because we learn from the past mistakes which yeah. other countries have done you remember what happened in the world trade center it's because of the mishaps that happened you allowing uh you and really passengers terrorists to come on board of the aircraft people never did um so much wasn't done but out of that we've learned our lesson in the aviation industry and that's why Kenya Civil Aviation Authority has been very strict on that yes that is really interesting and really informative so i've understood what the um, Kenya Civil Aviation Authority does yes tell us a little bit about Kenya Airport Authority now the Kenya Airport Authority are found in every airport here in Kenya and every airstrip here in Kenya and one of their major mandates is to make sure that the airport is a safe and secure place and that's why they are the people to issue you with a pass and a pass that means you have there's a form that you fill a security uh pass that you fill they need the, your your bio data mm-hmm. they need to know your name they need to know your address they need to know where where you went to school they need to know who are your parents who are your who are your father who is your mother and your academic qualification even your career where have you worked before so that by the time they do the what they do is they will come and they will do an audit once they do that audit they are able to see who is this kennedy mugrotsi who is asking for a pass what does he want to access the airport what is he, what is his qualification yeah. yeah kennedy is a pilot so he needs to access the aircraft you see and for them you cannot they are, you, you can ju- you cannot you cannot access the aircraft without passing through them so there are there is a departure and there is a arrival launch and majorly you will see they are always there to tell you remove your belt remove your shoes can i see your ticket where are you heading to uh, is your visa stamped all those things before you now come to the airline part so majorly the kenya uh, the kenya airport authority are the ones who even charge airlines and uh, training institutions where they park their aircrafts because they are the ones who are taking care of them so when you find an evil is coming to you you will find this parking fee and that parking fee goes straight to the Kenya to the Kenya airport authority and also for you to have a pass there's an amount you pay Uh, right now they reviewed their money from 3000 to 4000 because of the state of economy around Kenya so once you pay them now you can be able to access the air side because there's an air side and there's a land side so the air side is where permit has to be given and you have to display it it's, uh, it has to be very visible and the land side part of it is they are still under uh, they still take care of the land side where anyone can access yes but where what are you doing in the airport because you just can't come and idle in the airport bearing in mind that terrorism has been one of the greatest effect in aviation industry you do any small mistake in aviation then everything is done lives will be lost property will be destructed infrastructure will be will be will be destroyed and you know for you to build another infrastructure will take time and investigation has to be taken uh, into place now that is where now all other security multi agencies work with the Kenya Civil Kenya Airport Authority you will find the NIS working with the Kenya Airport Authority you will find the DCI you will find the Kenya Police now in the Kenya Police we have the Kenya Airports Police Unit it's called the CAPU where they they are, they are trained on matters to do with aviation on how to handle either dangerous items when uh, 
things have to be transported with with the aircraft from one destination to the other so they're well trained for it uh we have the anti terror anti terror police they are there we have the dog unit which are there and recently the Kenya defense forces joined to be part of the airport uh security multi agency yeah so they work hand in hand with the Kenya airport authority to make sure that the airport is safe and secure for anyone who wants to travel and even for the occupants of the airport that's really interesting i didn't know all those units are there i just normally see some police officers every time i see the dogs yeah. it's actually interesting to know that of course these bodies are really taking their work very seriously absolutely so um our next point of discussion that i'd want us to talk about is um if i want to be a pilot right now which kind of licenses do i need what's the procedure that i should follow to just be a pilot who can now fly either a helicopter or a plane okay thank you uh well, just to enlighten you there are two types of aircrafts that you're going to fly mm-hmm. we have the fixed wing the fixed wing is one that you see the wings are straight and it yeah i know most of the guys you will see it are uh, flying up there and uh, the small aircrafts then we have the rotary the rotary is now the helicopter those are the, i'll say majorly those are the two types of uh airplanes you need to know you need to understand there's so many different air uh, aeroplanes let's say they, we have the boeing hmm. we have the airbus we have the donia we have the beechcraft we have the cessna we have the foca we have the dash so under the fixed wing you will find such kind of aircrafts then when you go to the rotor now the helicopters you will find an airbus you will find a bell you see or you will find a a rotwella i think a rotwella is a type of an air of a, of a chopper so once you have that distinction each training takes different mm-hmm. so when you are to do the fixed wing you will do a different training mm-hmm. when you are to do the rotor rotary you will do a different training it's not the same because of the makeup of the aircraft that has been made because with this one you see the blades are up there and with this one we have the propeller that's what what uh, that is what you, makes it distinct so that you know either i'm doing a fixed wing or i'm doing a rotary now when you want to do i will really concentrate on the fixed wing mm-hmm. because i know so much about it with the fixed wing you have to first attain the qualification for you being a pilot mm-hmm. once you see the requirements let's say you will check your academics uh, from four what did you get i got a c plus or i got an a i got an at at least you should have a sleep c plus and above mm-hmm. the second thing is they will look at your geography because it's more you're flying up there so yeah. you have to be aware situational awareness which you're going to be trained in class knowing where you are where you're flying even if you're lost you can describe where you are so that uh, evacuating you to a safer place is easy now once you've qualified and see you have all the requirements and all the qualifications you will have to undergo a medical test and the medical test uh costs you around 20000 shillings mm-hmm. for you to be given a medical certificate by an approved doctor you remember us talking about the Kenya Civil Aviation Authority yeah. he's licensed by the Kenya Civil Aviation Authority and if if <laughs> i'll make a joke I don't know if it's a joke or anything okay the way people will take it do you know that we have only seven medical aviation doctors in Kenya seven that are supposed to now give you the medical certificate yes i wonder why people yeah. haven't tapped into it yeah yeah so if somebody is listening and he wants to go into that space yeah. it can be a good chance for them yeah. to do yeah, yeah seven Just is go. a low number yeah seven is a low number yeah. and bearing we have close to 200 pilots here in Kenya yeah. you know now we have seven medical doctors so once they, you an issue uh, you do an appointment with them now they'll go test you they'll test your hiv they will test your body your key you can fly they do a whole body test i say it takes a day because the first time I did mine I think I took the whole day from 8 to 5 p.m. because they will do x-rays they do the chest x-rays and all things so once you issued and that medical certificate will say either you're fit to fly or you're not fit to fly at what point are you not fit to fly I have no I've never encountered a 
place where guys have been given mm. are not fit to fly unless you have pressure issues you have oh. very serious medical conditions that will make you not fly is hiv a serious condition uh, I will say not really because that will be discrimination yeah. but again we have to look it at a wider space because if person A is infected by person B person A is a pilot and sees this person B coming to his aircraft then he's like you know there's that anger that human beings have like you're the one who infected me oh, yeah. so this aircraft is going down yeah you see yeah that, I, get what you, I get where you yeah you get from. where I'm yeah. coming from yeah so we have to be very uh concerned that you have to be very serious about it. Now, once you're given the medical certificate, you've been issued, now you are fit to fly, now you take it to your, you will apply for something called the Student Pilot License, an SPL. An SPL is a license that shows you, you are fit to start your flying. Now you take your medical certificate with you, your SPL with you, because it has been applied by and all those are mat, uh, all those are required by the Kenyan Civil Aviation Authority just to make sure they know every they have a track of who is flying who is training who is doing what and what and what so you take it to your school to a flying school that you have selected because there are so many flying schools here in Kenya that you can fly with now once you've done that Let's say I will use 99th Flying School because I did training in 99th Flying School. You, you've taken that, you start your class. And through your class, you will, you will start first with ground training. Ground training is where you are taught close to eight topics concerning flying. That is human performance. We have navigation. We have, um, uh, principles of flight. We have aircraft technical and general. That's where you learn all the measurements concerning the aircraft which you're going to fly. They will tell you how the engine works, how to fly, what kind of fuel do you need. That is most of the engineering bit of it that you need to understand your aircraft. You can't just fly something that you don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, once you've done th- those topics, uh, the operations, procedures, and you've uh, you've trained for the three months because it's a vigorous three months training mm-hmm. that you need to understand. After that, you do an exam for you to now to show that you've been competent enough within the three months. Now you're ready to fly. So the pass mark is seventy, and the school has been very keen on making sure that we get the right pilots. I think even most schools are, are, are they are so keen about it. So, once you've done your phase, you've, you're, you're done with uh, the exams, you now start a, something called a simulator training. Now, the simulator training is, this is a machine where you just sit and it gives you that feel of flying, mm. but you're not flying. Yeah. You need to, you see the measurements. When you're told, because let's say the first aircraft uh, test training you're going to do, we, we call it the familiarization flight. In the familiarization flight, you're doing nothing, but you're being showed how to fly. They, sh- they show you when you're, ta- when you're taking off, this is what we do. When you do a, a takeoff descent or a, no, a takeoff uh, turn, this is what, this is the angle you use. Let's say it's 15 degrees because when you're, t- when you're climbing, you use 15 degrees. When you're staying at a uh, straight and level, what are you looking at when you're training? Then when you're doing a descent, what are you looking at when you're descending? So in the familiarization flight, you're being taught on how you'll be doing and how the activities are going to done, are going to be done. Mm, yeah. So this is when you're in the, in the simulator. You've already finished your simulator. Mm-hmm. You've passed all the tests that has to be done in the simulator. Now you're fit now to go to now to the real aircraft. So in the real aircraft now, again, you start again with a familiarization flight. You do a pre-flight check. Once you do your pre-flight check, you check the wings, you check every control system. You don't leave anything unturned. And there's one thing I was taught by my first instructor. He, he said it to me very clearly. In aviation, don't ever assume anything. Yeah. Assumption is the mother of all fuck-ups. You assume one thing and 
it destroys the whole lot that you are supposed to do. So you go step by step by step, making sure that everything is safe. Now you're done with your flying. Mm-hmm. The first, uh, of course, you've done your first uh, first flight. You build on your hours. You start training on the local area. After the local area, you do circuits. Circuits, you just you are just around doing, let's say, kind of a rectangle in an mm-hmm. airport. You're taking off, turning right, looking at the downwind side. So we have the upwind. We have the crosswind, we have the downwind, and we have the best leg, then finals. So if I have to draw to you, it will be kind of a rectangle. Mm-hmm. So you can, you, can, you can picture it. We have the road, that, that's the runway, yeah. and you're doing a rectangle. Mm-hmm. So it just you are taking off, doing the crosswind, doing the downwind, doing the best leg, and doing the final. That's landing. Then you take off. You do such kind of activities for... Let's say for 10 hours, then you're given your first solo. Mm -hmm. This is one of the most memorable things any pilot looks forward to, your first solo. Because all this time you've been flying with an instructor. But this is the one time that you fly alone and you feel how nice it feels to fly alone. Yeah. Yeah. So once you do your first solo, of course... Different schools celebrate in different ways. Yes. Us guys are being posted on Facebook. Some mm-hmm. schools they decide to wash you with mud, with anything, because yeah. they say now you you are at the bow of a pilot. Now you've yeah. flown alone, and even you're given a congratulations from the town. Now, once you're done your, with your solo hours, you build five solo hours. So you need those five hours solo hours. On the process you're doing your solo hours, you're gonna do. You remember the the ground school that we did. Yeah. The three months. Yeah. Now you have to go to the Kenya Civil Aviation Authority. Do exams. Now licensed by them. It is from them. And we, it's called the computer based test. Mm-hmm. Where you sit in a computer, choose the answers. And then if you, if you get the pass mark, you do the other test. Cause I think the pass mark should be for exams. You should need to pass for exams. If you pass less. Out of? Out of the eight. Okay. If you pass less, then you have to redo the whole exam. And it's money. Because per paper costs 1500 You can imagine. So you're yeah. paying for eight papers. You yeah. have to be very serious about it. True. Yeah. So once you, once you passed all the exams with the Kenya Civil Aviation Authority, you come back now, you do your cross country. It all depends because I'm talking about the experience I've had. Yeah. Yeah. So it all depends with uh, how, which school you are in and what is their program. But similarly, kind of, we have the same program all throughout because we are all licensed by Kenya Civil Aviation Authority. Now, once you're done with your exams and you you are done with the five hours, you do cross country. And in the cross country, in the private, now you want to get the private pilot license. Remember, you still have the SPR, the student pilot license. You'll do a cross country. And in that cross country, what happens most of the time is you fly for close to two hours. So you'll fly, let's say, for example, Wilson Airport. To Kajiado, to Namanga, back to Kajiado, go to Magadi, and back to Wilson Airport. So that may take you 2.5 hours. So after that, it's when you apply now for the examiner. Now the an examiner, a person who is qualified, who has the experience, who has the technical know-how, who has been in the industry for close to 30 plus years, will come now examine you and see whatever the training that you've been doing, you're quitting the correct thing. Because this person, you haven't flown with him or yeah, her yeah, before. Yeah. This is the first time you're meeting them. You see, so they will go examine you. You you give them a brief on uh, what you're going to do, how you... They will ask any kind of question. So you prepare so well so that you pass. So once you pass your exams, you're given now, you're issued now with a private pilot license. Mm-hmm. You've had your 40 hours of flying. Yeah. Now you have the private pilot license. And it's a bit costly because uh, ICAO, uh, the International Civil Aviation Organization, they gave requirements on, uh, they gave, uh, I think, how much it needs to cost for flying per hour mm-hmm. because you're charged per hour. Now you have your private pilot license. Now you move to commercial pilot license. Mm-hmm. Again, you have to go back to class oh. for three months. Now this is advanced training. Because you want to move into the commercial space. You want to carry Wanjiku, you want to carry Kennedy. 
you can't just be carried by somebody who does not understand the commercial bit. Yeah. Although you have done the private pilot license, you can still fly people, but with no remuneration. You are not paid. You do it for free. That is what we call kazia yesu. Yes, you you are, it is even it's in the law. You are told the Kenya Civil Aviation Authority tells you you cannot be paid unless I don't know if maybe your boss decides to pay you. But you see, with the private private license, the privileges you cannot get. As like. you, uh, let's say for example, working for a big airline, mm. you cannot you can you you can't do that. Yeah. Unless you move now to the commercial space. Now, once you're in the commercial space, the commercial pilot license. This is where now you will require a hundred solo hours. And the minimum for you to finish the commercial pilot license is 200 hours. Plus, it's cumulative of what you got in the private pilot license. So you are done with your private pilot license. Now you move to your commercial pilot license. After the 200 hours, again, another test is done. Well, you said 200 hours is inclusive of the, the, 40. the 40 hours. Yeah, so okay. you're looking at 160 hours. Yeah. Yeah. So at, out of the 160 hours, you have 100 hours that you need to look for, for solo hours. Mm. Yeah, so that becomes around 200 hours. Now you do your exams with the commercial pilot license. And now, and the commercial pilot license exams are not even something to laugh about because they will, it will take your blood, your sweat, your money. You have to be very good at it because you can never, you can never risk losing one life in aviation. Yeah. So after the commercial pilot license, now you can decide even as you're doing the commercial pilot license, let me do the multi instrument rating. All this time we've been flying with one propeller. Mm. Depending on the aircraft, either you're yeah. flying a Cessna 172 or a Cessna 152 or a Cessna 182, they, ho- they have only one propeller. That's one engine. Now you are moving to an advanced place. Now you do the multi instrument. Now the multi is now you're flying two engines. And again, it takes a vigorous training for you to, to reach there. So once you're done with your multi, you're qualified. So um, we've had the private license. We've gone to the commercial license. Mm-hmm. With the commercial license, can I be paid? Yes. According to the law? Yes. Uh, okay. So now this commercial license, yeah. now that you've been stuck to the one propeller, yes. are you also limited to only flying a specific, a one propeller only kind of? Nah, no. Mm-hmm. Because now that's when you go for ratings mm-hmm. with the aircraft. You can either do a Donia, you can either do a Dash, you can either do a Caravan. Depending on how your your pocket will say. Even there are guys who come straight from a single engine to Boeing, mm. to Embraer. What makes them move? It's just the money and it's just the skill. Okay. The yeah, money for what? For paying for the rating. Because the rating for aviation is very expensive. For when you say rating, you mean? When I say rating, I mean, in a, let's say in a layman's language, mm-hmm. we have different cars. We have Mercedes, we yeah, have BMW. Yeah. So you can decide to go buy a Mercedes or you can decide to go yeah. buy a BMW, yeah. Yeah. depending on your pocket. And that's yeah. what happens in aviation. You can either go for Boeing, you can either go for Dash or a Caravan, depending on the money that you have. And even depending on the company, are they willing to sponsor you to do that? So once they sponsor you to do that rating, mm-hmm. you come back, now they will bond you for years. They tell you, now you stay with us for the next seven years because you couldn't afford it yourself. Yes. So that's what happens. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay, so now we've gone to the multi-purpose. You've yes. called it multi-purpose. Ma- multi-engine. Multi-engine. Yes. Which is for the license as well. We yeah. still need to undertake training. Absolutely. Is it also three months? No, no that, that that you do for one month. Mm-hmm. You do. Now when you go to, that's in a higher level of flying now. Once you do, uh, you let's say for example, you're flying the Dash 8. You'll go for typically two months. One month is for ground school. You bring taught because ground school is very important in aviation. Is it always different? It's always different the depending on the aircraft that you go to. Yeah. So the more you go, the more advanced it becomes. You see, so you do your ground school for a month, and then now you start the flying, and you have to start with a simulator. Mm. Any training you do, a simulator is also is always involved. Mm-hmm. You move from a single to a double engine to a multi engine. A simulator has to be 
a, a training on the simulator has to be done. Yeah, so you go to the Boeing, you, you after the one month uh, ground school training, you still do the simulator training before you now you move to the real aircraft. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So multi-engine is the last. Yes, that's ah. I would say that's the peak of it. But under the multi-engine, now if you have we call the ATPL, the airline pilot license. Usually it's written by uh, with an abbreviation called AL Alpha Lima. Mm-hmm. So that is the highest you can never be. There's nothing else past that there's nothing. It's just experience. So during during these stages you are getting the respective licenses that you need after the training and passing of the exams. Yes. So now my next um question would be if I'm a foreigner yes. and probably I've trained in a foreign country, yes. all these things that you're saying, maybe to a specific point. Yes. When I come here in Kenya and mm. probably I'm from Canada and I want to work with Kenya Airways. Yes. Do I still need to go back to class and redo this training or is there a specific Now what happens uh we'll give you an example. Let's say for example, so many pilots here in Kenya Actually, so many Kenyans go train in South Africa mm-hmm. to do their pilot training. So, when you come back to Kenya, you do something called a conversion. Now, conversion is you're just converting your license to Kenya. We don't, we don't say that you not, you haven't done the training. Whatever you did in South Africa is not worth. Yes, we agree it's worth. Even in Canada is worth. But when you come here in Kenya, you have to do a conversion. And that conversion, again, you have to go back to class. Mm-hmm. You have to learn the Kenyan law, because how they fly there is not how we fly here. Yeah, true. Yeah. So once you do and you've gone to class, you've done. Uh, m- majorly, you have to do everything. So in the conversion again, you have to do the exam to convert your license into the Kenyan license. So you have both the South African or the Canadian uh, uh, license, and then you're converting it to the Kenyan license. Yeah. So once you've passed the exams, now you're issued with a Kenyan license. Uh, which allows you now to even look for work now you can work with south africa uh, we can work we can work with kenya airways mm. yes okay i understand what you mean and now um towards the as you conclude i want to understand is the license something that you renew yearly annually yeah the license you renew according to i say depends let's say for example the student pilot license mm-hmm. expires after two years mm-hmm. the pilot uh the private pilot license expires after a year the commercial pilot license expires after a year or two depending if you haven't used it yet you, it's just the the house so you have to check always check and once you renew there there's a procedure of renewal let's say for example the private pilot license you've not flown for two years so once you come back you will do one uh, you will do one exam mm-hmm. it's called the air law Mm-hmm. So after you've done your air law, you need six hours on the rating. On the rating, that means the small aircraft that you're flying. Yeah. So you need to do six hours, and the pi- and. Meaning, um, do you still have to go to school? Am I only? Yeah, you still go back to school. Yes, uh, you just go back to school because it's only schools that will issue you with those hours. So you still have to pay. Ah, okay, interesting. Yes. Um, the next thing that I'd want us to also talk about, we've talked about the licenses and all that. Um, do you have specific licenses that um vary depending on where you you fly to? Ah, uh, no. Uh, the license is just the same. Maybe let's say for the domestic airlines, uh-huh. the license is the same. For international airlines, their license is the same. So it does not depend on which route you fly. No, it doesn't depend with which route you uh-huh. fly. Yes. Well, that is extremely interesting. I feel so educated. I thank you again. I appreciate it. And I'd also want us to talk about um, the consumer protection, especially when it comes to the aviation industry, but that is going to be on our next episode. So um, what are your final comments in terms of someone who's aspiring to either be a pilot, get the license, and the legal and regulatory body here in Kenya as well? Uh, my encouragement will be to, the, to anyone, because I believe a dream is never lost. And depending on what dream that you have, you might be 50, you might be 60, and still you have the dream of becoming one, of mm. becoming a pilot, yeah. you can always do it. Because I believe the, no, no one has the destiny, uh, has the destiny to anyone's dream. It's you to move the dream. So my encouragement will be if you are, if you feel like you want to dream above the skies, you can still come join and do any kind of aviation in course that you want to do. And also, uh, the regulatory bodies here in Kenya, I really want to 
give them a thumbs up because they're doing a very commendable job. And that's why so much litigation, you've never had so much litigation here in Kenya. Yes, we have delays, we have uh, bugs being misplaced and all these things. But you see, we have a follow-up because we are after satisfying the customer. Yeah. We want you to fly more and more and more. And I will encourage guys, just fly, save. You don't have to save so much because right now in the aviation industry, you can fly to Mombasa, you can fly to Kunda, Eldoret, Lodwa. Depending with which uh, which airline you choose and where they fly to, just feel the experience of flying high and how to look, uh, how you look below the clouds and everything. It will be, I'm sure, it will be an experience that somebody will want to and one day say, "I wish I'd done it earlier." Thank you so much, Onjiko. Thank you also for enlightening us again, Kennedy. We appreciate you. Um, and guys, in case you have any questions, feel free to also ask. Our next episode is going to be on consumer protection. Be sure not to miss it because I'm sure most of us have either lost our luggages, um, we've either taken someone else's luggage, we've yeah, either so overbooked, or we've had cancellation or flight delays. Yes. But for today's episode, that's it. See you next time. Music Podcasts, the home of podcasts in Kenya.